For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves in Edinburgh, Scotland. What you're looking at now is the castle. We're walking up to it. It's quite a bit of a journey. It is a rather cold and windy day. And you know what? It's worth it because the views up here are just phenomenal. Technically, this is our second day here roaming around the city. We've been here for about three days, but two days on foot, just kind of walking around, taking it all in. And we absolutely love it. We're not a big fan of the cold, but we love it. It's about 10.30 in the morning. And we like getting out here a little early because it kind of feels like we have this entire place to ourselves. It is the weekend, the time of recording this, which means at some point today, there are gonna be people everywhere. The plan today is pretty much walk across the entire city, documenting all things witchy and horrible. There's a lot of really small little hidden places here that not many people come to see. I mean, right now we're walking up to the castle. We're not doing a tour, but there are tons of people lining up to go inside the castle for a little taste of history. We're here for the grim history. Basically, we're just gonna be walking around pointing the camera at spooky things, and you get to come with us. Hope you're ready, because we got a lot of walking to do. Whoa. <laughs> We're not going today. Come on, come on, come on. This is one of your dreams. <laughs> I love birds. <laughs> I'm not a fan of birds. But. So her name's Guinevere. Guinevere. And she is 10 years old. Same age as Einstein behind you. This is a European eagle owl. So these are the largest species of owl. You can stroke her here just out Aww. front. Aww. My pet. Hi. <laughs> so she will live up to 45 to 50 years in really? captivity. Really? Yeah. How long in the wild? Half that, about 20 really? days if she's lucky, yeah. So mainly catch rabbit, but if they've got youngsters, they'll catch foxes and deer. Okay. They're two thirds bigger than a great horn now. And they're mostly feathers, right? And legs. It's all feathers. All legs. And legs. Yeah. I'm not a fan of birds, but I think I like owls because you, like you owls? are cool. Look at those eyes. So these feet here, pressure in their feet, is the same as a golden eagle. At 450 pounds per square inch. Oh man. Wild. She's gorgeous. Very gorgeous. You can do a cheek to cheek. Just bring her a bit closer. She's watching Paul. Wait. It's because it's windy. It is windy. There you go. No. It's a little tiny one there. Hello. Hi. Oh, you're too precious. Yeah, you're precious. Oh, you do. Okay. So nice to be here. Yeah. Right. Now things are there. As you, know, as you just hold the, the eagle out, you can hold them close. You can't hold these two close. Okay. Because she will peck you. Don't peck me. Open your hand for me a sec. Open it. Now, now, now make a fist. Now bend you over a bit closer. Right? And there we go. you now got Lenore on your arm. I got Lenore. <laughs> Lenore is the Northern Raven. Right? The flatter your hands, oh, the hand, right? like you're feeding the horse. And then move your hand away because she will bite you. Whoa! Those wings are something else. Come here, man. You are precious. We do have another one called Nevermore. Nevermore, Lenore and Nevermore. Yeah, uh, so they're named after the Egan Allen Poe the Raven. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. She's 10 years old and she was actually bred for the Tower of London. Oh, but that's right. Many. They're a su supremely intelligent. They have an IQ equivalent to about 118. Jeez Louise. I, th I think we need a pet raven. We need a raven in our household. It only makes sense. I didn't realize how massive they are. I mean, you see pictures yeah. or like, I'm in the wild, but like up well, close. This is a female one. The females are actually bigger than the males. Oh. I she, love Lenore. She is, she's amazing, isn't she? I know people walk around with them on the shoulders, you know, but they get them from, a baby, yeah? Yeah. And, and 
the train them like that. So then hopefully they won't peck you. Wow, okay. Th these are, these are, are not pets. I mean, oh. we do flying displays with them as well. What are you washing your face? You're washing your beak. Let's see if she wants to be. Pass me the water one, Jamie. Oh, water. Let's see if she wants to drink. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Let me just check it's on the right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> some her. I hope that that's fast and tight and done it. What's that? The thing goes there. Oh, you're good. Uh, no, she... I love the way she sounds. You are too precious. Ah. Oh. I think she thinks that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. And she isn't known to say mum. Mum? Yeah, they can, they can get a few words as well if you really spend a lot of time with them. You are too precious. Well, thank you for letting me hold you. Okay then. Yeah. Do something you have for me? <laughs> the unthinkable has happened. I held a bird. And you liked it. In Scotland. Lenore was amazing. Lenore and I, we connected. Really? We did, we did, yes, yes. So I told them you weren't looking. I said if they ever needed a babysitter, or a, I'm sorry, a birdie sitter, to give us a call. The Grimms. Always support the street musicians. So many people getting pictures and video are not contributing. We always do. Our first stop today is up near the castle. It's this drinking well, this drinking fountain right here, known as the Witch's Well. I've seen pictures online, but seeing it in person is completely, completely different different thing. So here you got the wicked head. You can see it's like a, a spooky witch. And then you got the serene head. This one represents those who wanted to use their powers for evil. And then this one here was more about, you know, using your powers for good. And then you got the snake representing the duality of the two. It's pretty neat, right? So it says, there's a plaque right up here that says this fountain is near the site on which many witches were burned at the stake. Man, this wind is getting crazy up here. I mean, you can see the flowers, look at this. The plaque here on the fence says, the witch as well. This drinking fountain commemorates the people executed here for witchcraft in the 1500s and the 1600s. And then there's little markings. This one here says, hands of healing. On the other side, if I'm not mistaken, it says something about the eyes. This one's a little hard to see, but it says the evil eye. I don't want to damage the flowers too much, but let's see what it has here. See, that's pretty. That's very pretty. Well, it seems we love going into old churches on our travels. You guys want to go inside this one? It looks like it could very well be a doozy. Look at this. Oh my word. I kind of feel like I'm underneath a bat's wing. You would think that we would, seeing the amount of these that we do, that we would get tired, right? Never. There's even an organist up there playing very faintly. Beyond beautiful. I feel an 
overwhelming urge to whisper in this place. Rightfully so, right? There is absolutely nothing like this in the States at all. Look at that stained glass. The detail, man, it's so massive. There's a room back here in the corner called the Thistle Chapel. They're just closed today, but look up the ceiling. I want to go inside the Thistle Chapel. Talk about something haunting, right? This ceiling is just giving me like these, these monster vibes. And you can't see this, but right here, if you look very, very closely, I'm gonna to try to show it. It says Patronus, another little thing towards Harry Potter. But a little bat may or may not have flown from the rafters and landed on my shoulder and told us that Guillermo del Toro, you know who he is, has been in the area touring places for Frankenstein and he looked at this church. So there's fingers and bones crossed that we might be standing in a Frankenstein filming location. You never know. Bagpipes are being played off in the distance. But here's a closer look at that emblem on the, on the ceiling here. See where it says Patronus? Makes you wonder, right? Like how much inspiration of the stories came from here? It's honestly almost too much to take in. And of course, there's the real Mary King's Close. We're gonna do a lantern led tour through the close itself. We can't film, but we can show some pictures and uh, oh, we'll tell you what we think of it. It is really nice getting off the main street with the wind, but I tell you what, the wind just pretty much whips through the buildings like this. Now the main gift shop is right back here. I'm actually really excited about it. Anything that has a plague doctor on it. Now, of course, when we made plans to come here to Edinburgh, this was high on my list of things to do. And not even in the actual attraction itself, walking history, but I just love walking through all of this and just seeing all the art. So let's see here. Oh man. Would you look at that? I know it's just a cutout, but I need this in our house. If they sold this, it'd be on the airplane with us coming back to Los Angeles. I feel like we might need to get this book as well. And check out the shirt design. I love that it kind of looks like a tarot card. Man, I want everything in here. And of course they would have a barrel full of rats. Stuffed animals, of course. Can't be too safe. And if you're gonna have rats, you gotta have a bucket full of fleas. Now this is really nice. Up here in the corner it says, the Scottish Register of Tartans, the real Mary King's clothes. Basically they had these made specifically for them little tag here that says the real Mary King's close 100% pure wool. I really like the colors. Both Jessica and I, I think we're going to get each get one of these. Yeah, that's nice. Right here in the waiting area, they have a little display board that talks about what you're going to get yourself into. The one that we're doing, you actually have some interactive characters. 
down there in the dark, and they give you a lantern, so we each get a lantern. We are both stupidly excited for this. Usually we don't do tours whenever we travel, but this is something that we both really wanted to do. Like literally, you're walking history. Now this is what I call an entrance. Oh my word. They even have Frankenstein's monster right here in the doorway. Just look at that. Oh, I love it. All right, I think I officially love this place. So there's a couple, couple different spots that you can eat. I think we have to eat in the main hall. How insanely cool is this? Right now we are sitting at the top of Frankenstein's lab. Oh, I love it. I so, so love it turning around looking at the steps that we just walked down to get to our table. They have these stained glass windows here. Oh my word. We need these in our house. Years ago, there used to be a restaurant in New York City, like in like downtown Manhattan, I think that's what you call it, uh, called Jekyll and Hyde's. And they used to do this show. It was like a horror themed restaurant, kind of like an amphitheater section, kind of like this. And this reminds me of that. The show here was absolutely phenomenal. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was gonna be a lot smaller than what it was, but I like that it was like this giant, horrific, horror-themed grandfather clock. Loved it. The food, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pizza, beer, french fries, can't go wrong with that. Our next stop on our walking tour brings us to Princess Street Gardens. Absolutely beautiful gardens at the base of the castle. But it has a very uh, interesting little story when it comes to the history of this place. It didn't always look like this. At one point, the Princess Street Gardens were like the foul pits of, well, you name it, excrement. Um, this is just not a place that you wanted to be. It was like the bottom of the barrel. And now it's a beautiful park. This place definitely has a feeling like you're walking down into a witchy cottage, doesn't it? Which is funny because back in the day, this was also where they used to test people to see if they were witches. 
down here in the gardens. Well, what are now the gardens? About the center of your screen behind the trees is where the castle sits high on the cliff. And if I pan the camera from the left to the right, you can kind of see how it dips down a little bit. Now just imagine back then, this was a nasty, nasty place. And if I'm not mistaken, the, the test that they used to test to see if somebody was a witch was called witch pricking, which is basically drawing their blood. And I don't know, some primitive way they were able to, to determine if you're a witch or not. At least they thought they did. To me, it's history like this that I find very interesting because history is always happening and it's always, it's always growing and morphing and, and things change and become something else. And to think that right now where I am standing here in this beautiful city and the sun's coming out, at one point was one of the most disgusting places to be in the city. It's kind of wild. When it comes to dark history here in the city, there are two names that everybody knows, and that's Burke and Hare, two serial killers that a lot of people get confused as grave robbers. In all actuality, they never dug up graves or stolen bodies. Instead, they killed them. They killed people, and then they took the bodies to a surgeon. Now, this here, there's a sign on the wall that says, Site of the Last Public Execution in Edinburgh. So, we're gonna show you where Burke was executed. Now right here on this corner, right where Jessica's standing, I'm going to point the camera down, you're going to see these three brass bricks. This is where, in front of pretty much the entire city, Burke was executed. Crazy, right? An interesting fact about this is that part of his sentence be that he was hanged publicly and dissected publicly just like his victims were. Right? It's kind of poetic if you really think about it. The crowd was said to exceed 25,000 people. Can you imagine 25,000 people here, packed in the streets? That's madness. On our walk to the building where Burke and Hare took the bodies, we actually pass where the trial took place. It took place right back here. You got the church, St. Giles Church to the right, and then you had the Supreme Courts right there. So their trial was held outside in front of everybody. I mean, at this point, everybody was, everybody wanted to watch. Crazy, right? Off the beaten path, but a dark history. It looks like there was a tour group back there, so they probably, that's probably what they're talking about. Ghost tours, it's starting to get dark. So right now we're over near the college section, like Old Town, and we're searching for one particular building. It's kind of like a needle in a haystack. I mean, we kind of have an idea where it's at, but it's, it's a little hard to find. And this area back here is called the High School Yards. Right now we're just kind of walking around. I'm sure if we took a, a ghost tour, they'd take us right to it. But it's hard, it's crazy to think that Burke and Hare would bring their victims, their bodies back to this area. There's a sign that said Old Surgeon's Hall and Surgeon's Square is back this way. And I know that Surgeon's Square is what we're looking for. Oh, it's gotta be right there. So everything that I saw online and all the different research, this is the address that it gives. This is the old surgeon's hall where Burke and Hare would bring their victims, the bodies, and uh, they would bring them to Dr. Knox. Crazy, right? At some point, we're going to come back and do a really, really big video on all this. But just to be able to stand here blows my mind. Now, if you know anything about the Grim Life Collective, then you know that Jessica loves fall leaves especially if she can play in them, but she found a giant leaf that is almost as big as her head. And it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At some point, I promise, we're gonna come back to this city and do a video, a proper video on Burke and Hare. But for now, this is just things that we can walk to and get a little taste, a little sprinkling of the grim in this historic city. All right. I think it's time for a ghost tour.
Now, how fitting is this? The Ghost Bus Tours. I like that it's like a black double decker bus. It's the Ghost Bus Tour, the award winning comedy horror show on wheels. Thank you. Haunted bus, spooky conductor. <laughs> it's a one of a kind comedy horror show on wheels. I want to drive around in this thing. Look at that. That's our ride while we're here. It's absolutely perfect. The guy's having fun. You can hear him. It's the Ghost Bus Tours. Do, do, do. It's the Ghost Bus Tours. And we just noticed that it says the Necro Bus Transport. There's a little ghoulish person in the window there. That is right up our alley. I love that he's singing it. I mean, come on. How cool is this, right? We ride in style. Spooky style. A grim style, if you will. Well, look how amazing this is. We got a spooky land. We got some Halloween decorations, some spooky music. Oh, I'm loving it. This was a good choice. This was, this was all your idea. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, look where we are. It appears you're sitting aboard one of the original Route Master buses for the Necropolis Bus Company, yes. These buses, you see, were originally used and designed for transporting dead bodies for funerals. That was, of course, until 1963, when a mysterious and tragic fire destroyed our depot. Yes, a mysterious and tragic fire indeed. You see, there was this weird old woman. Oh, wait. Not allowed to tell you that part. Well, what I can tell you is that one bus survived the blaze that night. The one you're sitting in right now. Route Master 666. Yes, that's right. We took it out of storage and decked it out to its former glory. Isn't that nice? We don't use it for funerals anymore. It's a dying trade. However, Strange things have been known to happen on this bus. Arrest assured, of course. No one's going to get you. No one's going to touch you. Not unless you ask nicely. And no one's hiding in the deepest, darkest crevices of the bus, ready to jump out and scare you. However, should you feel the breeze down the back of your neck, or a hand, Rushing through your hair. <laughs> Extensions. <laughs> Rest assured. It's entirely. Genuine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this is important. For those of you facing forward in the bus, if I tell you to look to the right, you look to the right. <laughs> but for those of you facing backwards, That's if awesome. I tell you to look to the right, you look to the left. Some of you look confused. <laughs> well, rest assured, we cater to all abilities, especially blondes. But anyhow, how excited to begin our ghostly, ghastly Edinburgh Ghost Bus Tour! I'll take that as a yes. Then let us venture back to that time of disease, brutality, poverty, and prostitution. <laughs> Do I clap? That was okay, awesome. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and as we come to a stop right here, we're stopping at my favorite place in the world. St. Cuthbert's Graveyard, the oldest and most haunted graveyard in all of Edinburgh. Now the graveyards back in their day were famous for something in particular. Body snatchers, or as they were otherwise known, resurrection men. These were criminals who would break into people's graves at night, steal their corpses, and sell them off to medical students for quite a pretty penny. How pretty a penny? Ten pounds a corpse, to be exact. A year's wages. Um, sorry to interrupt, but you're all gonna have to get off this bus. Get off the bus? 
What do you mean? We have a slight problem. Slight problem? The bus is insane. It's insane? Everyone off. Angus, where do you expect us to go? Why don't you have a wee wander through the graveyard? It's a nice night for it. setting off your social anxiety. It's okay, you've got earpods in, it's all right. Now, the little girl's modus operandi, and what she does is, is she comes up behind her thing, you're gonna tug on a ball on the back of their coat. So should you feel a tug or pull sensation do not turn around. What if you do, you will encounter a sick and twisted fate, but not even the most sick and twisted mind. Can imagine. So not even this guy right here, yes. We all know what he really uses that camera for. But anyhow, she sounds like a bundle of joy, doesn't she? So let's go looking for her, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and off he goes. Oh, who might you? At this point, you're no doubt wondering, what's so spooky about a crane? Well, I suppose I bloody well better tell you. You see, when it came to graveyards, the people of Edinburgh had a rather nasty habit. Not stalking their ex on Instagram like you. <laughs> See, she didn't even deny it. <laughs> but burying people alive. By accident, if you could believe it. Now, a lot of these dead people were just in comas. But this happened so often that say... Say you, good sir. Say you should wake up one morning and find yourself accidentally buried alive while your girlfriend is accidentally in the Bahamas with your best friend. <laughs> she, she didn't even deny it. You would notice that there was a string tied to your wrist. The string would extend out the coffin, be attached to a little bell. You pull the string with your wrist, it rings the bell, and if you are dug out in time, you are saved by the <laughs> bell. And you were therefore a dead ringer as opposed to a dead person. On to more sinister matters. The little girl I mentioned earlier. She's actually buried just right up there, behind. She's been known to attack. <laughs> Women! Men <laughs> with impressively groomed beards. Yes, I was talking to you. Take the compliment. She's an equal opportunity attacker, of course. Hashtag girl boss. But her most recent hashtag slay, of course. Hashtag ghost queen. Okay, I'll stop right there. Now, as I said before, her most recent victim was a homeless man. Now, this poor chap, she went as far as actually take out a Okay, changing the subject for no reason at all. Let's just head towards the top, right, shall we? Towards more day. Of course, follow the weird little man in the black. <laughs> the tour guide has left us. He said, stick to the path and watch out for the rats. Basically, we're walking back to the, the bus right now. Now, usually we don't do tours. We don't take them ourselves. We usually just kind of go and explore on our own, but back whenever we lived in Savannah, Georgia, we used to do tours. Uh, walking tours as well as uh, tours inside a house. So this is kind of a, 
a nice little change, a nice little walk. At the castle up there on the hill. Oh, up there on the mountain. <laughs> I believe they call that a cliff. Yeah, you're right, the cliff. Okay, folks, as we're coming it. round here, I want you to have a look out. The windows on the left, have a look out the windows on the left. That is Crass Market Square, where thousands of criminals were publicly executed until 1864. Since then, thousands of people who visited Grass Market Square have complained a constricting feeling around their necks of being choked by an invisible noose. Okay, keep looking out the windows on the left. Coming up first, Grey Pub with gold lettering. That's the Beehive Inn, said to still have the door to the hanging cell of the Colton Jail, where William Burke sat before he was executed a little bit later on how he and Hare got caught. Also coming up on the left, Dark Green Pub with gold lettering. That's the White Hart Inn. A former drinking hole of Birkenhairs that dates all the way back to the 1500s, and in 2005, it won the award for the most haunted pub in all of Scotland. Clearly, the person who gave that award, of course, has never went drinking in Glasgow. Also coming up on the left, small blue pub, black wooden sign, white lettering, that's Maggie Dixon's, named after the most famous woman executed here. Now, Maggie Dixon was hung in 1728 for the crime of concealment of pregnancy. Having fathered a child out of wedlock, you see. But, astonishingly, Maggie Dixon survived the hanging, living on for another 40 years, with a horrible ring mark around her neck and a gruff voice like Bonnie Tyler. I actually used to live in this part of Edinburgh when I first moved here in the 70s. Oh, the 1870s, I should add. Ah, yes, back when the Beatles were just bugs and the Bee Gees were just letters of the alphabet. <laughs> Not that you kids would know. But most recently, a woman stopped me here in the street. She stopped me and asked, What does your father do for a living? I said, my dad's dead. She said, terribly sorry, but what did you do before he died? I said, but ah! <laughs> oh, I'll never forget those last words from my father. Stop shaking that ladder. Anyhow, just while we're still on Northbridge, I should probably get around to how exactly Burke and Hare got caught. Well, you see, the dynamic duo had a certain way of doing what they did. Most of their victims, you see, were strangers to the city of Edinburgh. Tourists like some of you sitting on this bus. Burke and Hare would typically approach them at a tavern or a bar and offer them a dram of whiskey. Then another dram? And another dram, and a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, here's another dram. <laughs> Once the poor soul was sufficiently sedated, Burke and Hare would take them back to their lodging house at Tanner's Close. And it was there that Hare would sit on the victim's chest. Burke would clap the victim's nose and mouth shut, suffocating them to death and apparently leaving no signs of foul play. However, Burke and Hare were eventually, as the kids would say, caught lacking when a body of one of their victims was discovered underneath their bed at the lodging house at Tanner's Close. The consequences that arose from this were that William Burke immediately was hung by his neck to his very, very death in front of a crowd of thousands of people. His body was dissected. His skeleton was placed on display at the Surgeon's Hall Museum. And the skin from his very hands was removed and used to make the leather for a book detailing his crimes. Now William Hare mysteriously, through cooperating with the police, was let off scot-free from Scotland itself. But ultimately, folks, what can we learn from the story of Burke and Hare? Well, if you're ever in Edinburgh one night, and two Irishmen offer you a dram of whiskey, do not take them up on their offer.
Unless they happen to be Liam Neeson and Michael Fassbender, then absolutely take them off of their own. <laughs> Especially Liam Neeson, am I right, ladies? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's just me, but serious, I'd like to be taken by him. <laughs> and his particular set of skills. Uh, changing the subject for no reason at all, folks. <laughs> if I look out the windows on the right, that is Arthur's seat overlooking Hollywood Park. Yeah. Now, in 1836, five young boys and their dog were here for a spot of fox hunting in Hollywood Park when they discovered these buried in the grounds. The 17 four-inch wooden coffins, each containing their own perfectly handmade little wooden figure. Now there's many rumor and speculation as to what these figures were made for. Some surmise witchcraft, others believe that they were made by the wives of sailors commemorating <coughs> their husbands lost at sea. Some believe that as there were 17 of these figures, they were made to commemorate the 17 victims of Burke and hair. Now you can actually find these coffins on display at Edinburgh's iconic National Museum of Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm going to need you all to pull the curtains shut right now. All of the curtains, pull them shut right now. For those of you too nervous to pull the curtains together, pull yourselves together for God's sake. <laughs> I'll explain everything in a moment. Don't need to expose me, jeez. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a heavy heart I must inform you that we won't be able to finish this tour tonight. For I fear there is something with us uh -oh. on this bus. I'm afraid you've all guessed too well. Granny Black. For you see the fire that Granny Black died in on this bus. She died on Friday the 13th Friday of October. Nineteen. No one cares. <laughs> Sixty years ago. This very night. That's why everything's going wrong. That's why my jokes have been bombing all night. Oh, that made you laugh. But most importantly, it's why she won't let us leave. But don't worry. There's hope for us yet. How so, you may ask. You speak, how so? You're really not gonna? How so? How Thank so? you, yes. <laughs> Well, through a seance, you see. Oh, yeah. Together we can put our minds together, work together, reach through to the other side and confront her. However, it's important you listen to my instructions carefully, especially if you intend on having another birthday here. For you see, as anything can happen on the ghost bus, anything especially can happen during a seance, and any one of us can become possessed by the soul with which we're trying to reach. So heed my warning once more. Now you've all seen Most Haunted, right? Well, this is nothing like that. We're dealing with real ghosts. Grow up, Rachel. Okay, on the count of three folks, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an energy field using the powers of concentration. From the count of three, we're going to concentrate as hard as we possibly can on this evil spirit. Are we ready? Yeah. Heard a couple of no's there. That's not going to help. <laughs> From the count of three. One. Two. Three. Spirit, show yourself. Give us a sign, any sign, throw something, bang! Uh oh. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Uh, spirit, if you mean this harm, bang again! I dare you! I don't! <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, folks, we're gonna have to take a tougher line with her than I expected. Spirit! Spirit, make yourself known. Are you the ghost of Cranny Black? That horrible old woman who died all those years ago on Friday the 13th of October, 1963! But we didn't want you here, Spirit. Make yourself scarce from this metal steed at once! Oh no, it's Granny! Get out of my seat! Get in my holy! This is definitely like the coolest like ghost story ever. <laughs> it's been a mixture of live actor coming out. Like, <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Don't let me do that. It's a spooky sing along. <laughs> Let's open up those curtains. Let's see where we are. By God, I think we did it. I think she's finally gone. Then again, have a look at the person sitting next to you or across from you. Anything about them seems strange? Otherworldly? More than usual? We're both here. We're both still alive. I was filming the entire time. That has said, You've been a wonderfully brave audience. Give yourselves you a round of applause. <laughs> now, in a couple of minutes, we'll be coming up the road and round the corner to our room. Wherever I come, I'm in love. It's coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a 